Hi, my name is Cash. Welcome to the Auto Parent Podcast with my mom. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Auto Parent Podcast, episode 35, which we're calling Best Friends. I was wondering what you were going to call it. I'm your host, Pastor Casey, and y'all know me. So let's just go ahead and get to our special guest for this episode. Our special guest is Jackie Wright, and she is um, someone who is very special to me. Uh, We also are colleagues and work together at Foundry. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee because y'all know I need it. (laughs) Samesies. Um... She works uh, particularly with social justice and with our ID ministry here at Foundry. That's how we met. Um, But also, she's my best friend. So I'm excited that she's on the podcast. And welcome, dude. Thanks, dude. (laughs) I'm so glad we're doing this. Um, All right. Just like up top, I want to know what your biggest pet peeve is. You don't what? have a lot of pet peeves. I, I do not. Is that what you're about to say? Yes. Yeah. I, I think my biggest pet peeves are pet peeves. <laughs> For real. Like, you know, like, um, why do we have to, like, find things to be annoyed about? I don't know. Like, my um, my niece Clara will often talk about her pet peeves, and I'm like, just, I don't know. There's so many, like real things to be upset about in the world like I don't got time for a pet peeve (laughs) so I think my biggest pet peeves are pet peeves that's amazing see this is why I'm so excited that she's on the podcast because things like things like that (laughs) um because y'all know I just sit here and complain about things all day long um that's yeah so good so good all right so I want to know um and (laughs) <laughs> this is curious, too, because, um, yeah, I'm just going to ask the question. When is a recent time or a time that you can recall where you have laughed the hardest, period? This is hard because I was thinking about so many different things. <laughs> But, like, all of the the pirating talk that goes on between the two of us. Yes. But um, I think I'll just tell my little story that I just told you about pig in a pen. Maybe. Oh, please do. Oh, my God, please do. Okay, so my partner is a fabulously talented fiddle player, and he plays a lot of different kinds of music, but um, his favorite type of music to play is bluegrass, which is fairly new to me, <laughs> brought up on Mozart and Bach. And... He has a gig, a bluegrass gig coming up that he wants me to sing on. So he was working on some tunes with me. And there's a traditional bluegrass tune called Pig in a Pen. And it's, I'm going to sing it, but I'm going to sing in a very nasally way because that's the way you do it when you (laughs) sing bluegrass. So the, the chorus of the tune is... I got a pig home in a pen, corn to feed him on. All I need is a pretty little girl to feed him when I'm gone. Okay, I do not normally sing like that. I'm just saying that up front. Anyway, so I do not like this tune because I do not like the equating of the pig and the pretty little girl in the same, like, ew, like, you need a pig and a pretty little girl? Like, what is that all about? That just makes me feel really icky. So he figured that this was the case so he's like okay okay so maybe we should sing i got a pig home in a pen corn to feed him on all i need is a fully devoted partner to when i'm gone <laughs> and i just lost it like lost it on the floor dying just because like you know like if he got up there at a bluegrass gig, like a real one, and sang that, like people would just be like, "What?" They the would spit hell? out their hay. They would spit out their hay. <laughs> Whatever. Why they have hay in their mouth? I don't understand. You've never. No. Why would you, you never have seen people chew on hay before? Um. See. No. Virginia is a little bit south, but it ain't the south. No, if you know what no. I'm saying. I'm from Northern Virginia. <laughs> Northern Virginia. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So, so funny. Um, so funny. Uh, speaking of funny, we are going to do a different segment than I normally do. We're not going to do parenting fails, confessions, and wins. Um, we're going to do, we're going to do kid fails, kid funnies. And I can't believe they said that. Mm. 
How long you got? Just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so let's start with kid fails. Kid fails, um, lem- well, let me just give you an example. So um, my kids tend to forget they have things in their hands. And so <laughs> twice, and it happened this morning. This is why I, I like remembered it. And I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. This morning, we get on the elevator and Riggs has two spoons in his hand. Two spoons. Like out, you do. Y- like you do. Out of my drawer, two spoons. And I'm like, Riggs, why do you have spoons in your hand? And he, oh. And he, like, puts his hand <laughs> on his head. Oh. Like, it's the funniest thing ever. But thrice, thrice the older one has left the, the apartment with the actual remote in his pocket. Sure. Because he walks around the apartment with... We have a universal remote. It controls every single TV in our house, of which we have too many, I will acknowledge. And I'm speaking to you, somebody who doesn't own a TV. So, of course, we have way too many because we have one. (laughs) But we have three, okay? So just get over it. And um, we have this one remote that controls all the TVs. And I swear, he walks out of the apartment thrice. This has happened with the remote in his pocket. And every time, I'm like, are you serious? Now I have to be responsible for bringing the spoons and the remote and whatever <laughs> whatever else you bring out of the apartment on accident back into the apartment and put in its safe space. So first I just have to compliment you on your use of thrice. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then second of all, I think speaking of bluegrass, there could be a bluegrass tomb that involves spoons and remotes. I just think there could be like a new grass tune. <laughs> a maybe. new grass tune. So good. Let's write it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, what do you got? Uh, I would say that this is the fail, right? The kid fail, yeah. quote unquote fail. So Josie is my daughter, Josie, who is um, 11 going on president, um, <laughs> uh, has just started sixth grade, which is middle school here, mm-hmm. which is terrifying. And suddenly, out of nowhere, she is actually caring about what she wears, which is very strange to me because mm. she never has. And she's almost as big as me. I'm not a big person, okay, let's be clear. (laughs) So it's not that strange, but she's almost as big as me and she is now trying on all my clothes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those clothes migrate to her dad's house. Okay. So she went, she left my condo wearing a dress of mine the Mm -hmm. other day. And then um, when I picked her up the next day, she was still wearing that dress. (laughs) And she says to me, mommy, this dress is so comfortable. It's even more comfortable than PJs. In fact, it's so comfortable that I just wore it to sleep in. <laughs> Mind you, this is pr- kind of, I mean, from my standards, a kind of nicest dress. And I'm right. like, okay, you can borrow my clothes, but how about not sleeping yeah, in just them? Don't can we just them. not sleep in them? Plus, like, sweat and like yeah yeah. I mean you do all kinds of things when you're sleeping yeah and you know she's still sort of like she doesn't think of herself as a kid but she still does those kid gross things yeah kids do you know gross things yeah yeah so yeah Ooh, that's funny that's really funny um speaking of funnies so I (laughs) recently cash started school and it's kind of the first time you know since preschool that he's been in school because I homeschooled him last year for kindergarten. So when I just started doing this thing, and I don't know why, but the first day that he was about to go up to school, I have asked him the same four questions. And the first one is, are you going to be brave today? Oh. And the second one is, are you going to be kind today? Amen. And the third one is, are you going to feel what you feel today? Oh, God. And the fourth one is, are you going to use your brain today? Uh-huh. So those are the four questions that I asked him on the first day of school. And then as soon as he got out of school, I said, well, were you brave today? And he said, yeah. And I was like, were you kind today? And then I asked him to tell me about moments where he felt his feelings and moments uh-huh. where he used his brain. It's great. It gets him to talk to me about school. That's so great. Um, so we've been doing this for about a week and a half. And <laughs> Greg went to pick Cash up from school and had Riggs with him. And so... He went, picked up Cash, had Riggs in tow, got them all in the car, got them situated. And I don't think that Greg knew at this point that I was doing this every day with Cash because I'm the one that picks him up and drops him off. So anyway, (laughs) Greg pulls out from the school and is like about to turn on the next street and he hears Riggs go, well, 
Were you brave today? Aww. To cash. <laughs> oh my God. And Greg said, I mean, obviously Greg thought it was hilarious. And so he, you know, called me and was like, oh my God, like Riggs asked Cash if he was brave today. Like, where did he get that? And so then I told Greg about the questions I've been asking him. And so it turned from like a funny thing into like a really sweet, so adorable sweet. thing. I know. I want to ask Josie those questions, but I think she's too old. I'd have to reframe them or yes. something. Yes, yes. So. Aw, so good. Okay, so I want. I'm. I can't wait. Oh God, Tell me something funny. Okay, <laughs> so earlier. Well, actually, it's September now. So I was gonna say earlier this month, but in August, as you know, we took a road trip mm-hmm. to um, visit my 102 year old grandmother. Yes. And on the way there, my partner had a gig in Chicago, so we stopped one evening, and there was this really cool like house show on the roof of this condo in downtown Chicago. It was very, oh, I saw pictures of this yes, one. Yeah, right? this is really cool. cool. Yeah. Super cool. So it was a, probably about like 20 adults who were um, listening and Josie and I. I mean, I'm an adult, let's be clear. <laughs> so the band was John Wiley, who fronts this particular band, was was um, telling everybody his Venmo, the band's Venmo tag, so that people could send money. Mm-hmm. And out of the blue, Josie says, loud enough, projecting for everybody to hear, <laughs> she says, my Venmo <laughs> is nobody <laughs> underscore cares dot com. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, I, everybody was, everybody just like whipped their head around to look at this 11 year old who just said this thing. It literally like stopped the show for a second. Nobody underscore cares. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. So good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. So (laughs) our last section of this segment. I can't believe they said that. So, listen, I'm just going to prepare you right now. Trigger warning, whatever. Like, you are aware that this is a swear-friendly podcast. Lee is going to bleep it out, so just don't just don't worry. But I have to tell you exactly what was happening in my house the other day. So, this is a, and I can't believe they said that, for both of my children. Greg gets up and goes to work super early, like around 5.30 in the morning. And sometimes... The kids are up when he leaves. Sometimes they're not. So it just kind of depends. This particular morning, they had gotten up probably around 6, which is when I got up to start getting ready. So I'm getting ready. I'm in my room. Our apartment complex, or not our complex, our apartment, actual apartment, is like, I don't know how to describe it to you other than it's kind of like a rectangle. So like our bedroom is in the very, very back, and then the living room is kind of in the very, very front, and then the boys' room is in between. So anyway, it's kind of like a just one long sort of situation. So I'm in the back in our bedroom getting ready and I hear the kids in the living room and they're kind of whispering. And so I'm like, Oh God, like if they're, (laughs) if they're whispering and they're quiet, like something is not not okay. (laughs) So I kind of stopped getting ready and I stop kind of rustling and, and moving stuff around. And I go up to my door frame and I listen and this is what I hear. Riggs saying, shut your fucking mouth. And Cash saying, no, you shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> and Cash saying, and Rick saying, no, you shut your fucking mouth. And so they're just shouting this back at each other. Like, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Shut your fucking mouth. And I'm like, where did they get that? Because, number one, yes, I do use the F word occasionally, but I have never said shut your fucking mouth to my kids. I've also never said that course, to Greg of course, either. Of course, So I'm like, he must have come across this on YouTube uh-huh. or, or something. Or they, or... What I like to think is just they're, like, really great at using curse words. <laughs> like, they figured it out on their own. Well done. <laughs> I feel like a proud mom. <laughs> but, um, I mean, you know, at first when they first learned the F word, which, like, y'all, I mean, I know. I fully understand. But this is just what's happening. When they first learned to use the F word, especially Riggs, he would just walk around saying, fucking, fucking. Like it didn't, it wasn't like in response to anything. He just didn't know what was going on. But that's the only kind of like tense of that word that he knows. Mm -hmm. So like it makes sense Mm -hmm. like to plug it in right there. (laughs) And if so, like I'm proud a little bit. (laughs) 
But yeah, that's an I can't believe they said that for sure. For sure. I can't wait to hear your I oh can't believe gosh. they said that. <laughs> there were so many to choose from. When, when Josie was little and she would get up to go to the children's sermon, mm-hmm. I would always be like, oh boy, <laughs> here we go. Because I knew she would always say something out loud to everybody mm-hmm. and I did not know what that was going to be. <laughs> It was quite, I wish you had been there to see that, that phase. Yeah. I mean, she still sort of is in that phase where she just has no like internal editor for what (laughs) comes out of her mouth, which is a beautiful thing I'm told because Uh she's safe to, she feels very safe to say whatever it is she wants to say. But sometimes it's like, oh God, (laughs) cringeworthy, right? So I was trying to think about, there are so many things I could choose from, but the one that comes most to mind is... Um, this was probably a month ago. We were sitting around the table and Josie has been really, she's a, a very big advocate for LGBTQ issues and she's very interested in the whole culture and sort of like thinking about those things herself. And she she sort of said something that implied that like two women or two men could have a baby without any help, right? Oh. So it was... And, and so it was clear that she did not understand the physiological process of things. Hey, psst, we're talking about sex. Sex. <laughs> and since then, I've talked to her about sex. And now she knows and she thinks it's gross. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I said something to her like, well, you know, they can't really make a baby. A man and a man and a woman and a woman can't really make a baby without help. And she just, she just says to Eddie and I, she's like, well... I mean, I just don't know how all that stuff works yet. <laughs> and I was like, all right. I think Eddie nearly choked on his food. And like, she's just out with it. Yeah. Which is great. Yes. Sometimes terrifying, but also great. Sure. Sure. So good. So, so good. Well, this has been a segment called Kid Fails, Kid Funnies. And I can't believe they said that's. Along with your parenting fails, confessions, and wins, you could submit some fails, funnies, and I can't believe they said that's to the podcast. You can do so via voice memo. We'd love to hear your voice and bring you on the podcast. Um, or you can type them out to us on Instagram and Twitter at Auto Parent. And now it's time to do a little something different. It's time for our Get Real segment, where each week we take the lectionary passage and get real. Our lectionary text for this week is John chapter 6, verse 35, and then like 41 through 51. 51. Very good. So here it is in the New Revised Standard Version. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. And I read a little bit more than I should have, but that's okay. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain amongst yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the father comes to me. Not that anyone who has seen the father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh." Okay, so let's just do like some initial reactions, having just heard that text. What do you think about initially? So I think this is the part where I get kicked out of the podcast. (laughs) Probably not. All right. So, okay. When I first read this text, my first reaction was, ugh, because there's this line about, you know, very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me has eternal life, which is like, triggering to me because Mm. I feel like it is 
like suggesting that like on a very surfacey level, the way that this was sort of taught to me when I was a kid is sort of reminiscent of like John 14, which is like the only, you know, you have to go through me to get to the father. Nobody gets to the father, but through me. Right. So it's yes. like this very exclusionary situation that I am not okay with, I'm mm. not comfortable with. And I don't buy, like, I cannot read that text as in like literally if, unless you sit down and you fold your hands and you say, I believe in Jesus, you're going to go to hell. You're not, that just doesn't make any sense to me. And I don't like it. <laughs> and I'm sorry, all you people out there, but like, I, it's just, it does not. So that's when I first read it, that was like, ugh, like yeah. made me like, ugh, I have a problem with this and I don't believe it. And I don't think that's what it means. And I would love somebody who actually went to seminary to explain to me what that means. But, <laughs> but I will also say on hearing this now for like the third time, like the other thing is that sort of this idea that they, like the people can't believe that, um, well, actually, okay, there's lots of things going on. Yes. Can I just say that? Bring them all. Okay, okay. So first of all, there's the whole thing where the people are like, you, you, the son of Joseph and Mary, like, how can this kid have <laughs> right. anything? Like, so I think there's a real element of that, that sometimes our children or the people that we're, we're with, that we're very familiar with, can actually bring a lot of wisdom to our world and to our lives. And yet we don't hear it because we see them in this very particular way, this very, like, they're stuck in our minds as a teenager or whatever like mm -hmm. we're very familiar with them so we don't always recognize when they actually have something to add to right. offer right so that's one thing that is in my head the other thing is that at the end when they're talking about the people who ate the bread of the world then they all died <laughs> kind of thing that makes me think of very much of the idea that the things of the world mm. which are not bad or necessarily good that the main thing is that the things of the world do not last they are impermanent mm -hmm. they do not sustain indefinitely anything that we can have in the world is impermanent all the things that we love will someday go away and they will not remain with us eternally and that really the only thing that we can hold on to that will quote unquote give us everlasting life or remain with us eternally is God in whatever way you think of God. Spirit is the, for me, that's the best in for me is through spirit. And, and I, and I do believe that that is something that will sustain me eternally. That's always there that I can always count on. That energy of love is always there and I can always count on it, but everything else of the world, like, you know, everything we like to think is solid and permanent, like our homes or our jobs or our loved ones, like eventually they, they will pass away in some way mm -hmm. or another. So that what you do, what you want to count on is beyond all of that, right? Does that make sense? <laughs> I love how, I love how oh you just oh. like, preached a whole ass sermon. Oh God. And it was so like insightful and you, I mean, this is just further evidence of your call, but like, which we don't have to talk about right now, but like you were able to sort of like, and even, even knowing before we started to record this podcast, you saying, I like, I hate this part. Like I hate this part, which is what makes you a good student of the text in particular, because we all have things when we come to the text that like we approach it with this sort of posture. But anyway, like as you were talking, I was like, you're like weaving the text and the history of the text and like all of these things together to come like at this beautiful revelation. And then, and then you stopped and said, does that make sense? <laughs> Just like, oh my God, it was, it couldn't have been more perfect. Cause I was like, yeah, hell yeah. It makes all kinds of sense. I don't even think I need to say anything. Like that's kind of how I feel at this moment. Like you said it all. Can I clarify one thing? Oh, sure. Okay. So, because I've also have spent a lot of time studying Eastern religion and philosophy and I'm not, I'm not saying when I say that you can't count on the things of the world, I'm not saying that that's an, that is an excuse to not be devoted to your people, mm, right? Yep. Like, 
I believe that the spirit comes through people. So yes. like, you know, the people that I love, like I, I'm not saying like, well, screw that, you know, yeah. relationships are all just impermanent. Some are, some are not though. Yeah. Some are really not. And I really believe that. But in actual fact, people die, right? Mm -hmm. So if it comes to that, now, of course, like their love stays with you, right? Mm -hmm. But it's really the, the things that are deeper than what is actually physically manifested in the world, that that's where we really, our home really is. Yeah. So let me say this, like I, and I felt this as we were talking even before that clarifying point, but I feel like (laughs) <laughs> that what happens is this, like us all being tied up together, right? Like this, it's this universe thing that transcends just earthly relationship mm-hmm. and that our souls are linked. We're all on the same sort of clothesline together and mm-hmm. that we're just divinely in relationship and love in this way that transcends all of this other stuff that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Like that, that feels like a really helpful point. I find myself thinking with this particular text a lot about the... Well, okay, so first things first. John spends a lot of time trying to solidify Jesus's identity. Mm. A lot of time. Many, many, many chapters. Why? Many chapters. Is John feeling defensive? (laughs) I just want to know. Perhaps, but I will say this too, or perhaps and... John is one of the most like cosmically conscious gospels and super mystical and amazing and wonderful. It's just like, (laughs) it's just funny how much John spends trying to sort of solidify this identity of the quote son of God or what we might call the second person of God who Mm -hmm. incarnated in Jesus. I mean, the very beginning is in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God talking about this deeply meaningful theological point that the second person of the Trinity, which is not named Jesus, Mm -hmm. (laughs) the second person of the Trinity, Mm -hmm. which is the part, I mean, okay, let me say this is about to get really theological. And also like, I'm not sure how much I buy of this, but this is, this is the party line. Okay. Oh, that. And, ooh, I can use the I can use the witchy cauldron thing. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. I've been wanting to use this for a while. I actually, I, at this point, we've recorded so many podcasts. I don't know if I've said this or not. But that at the beginning, when creation was actively happening, when the tohu ivohu were being separated and chaos was being sort of, sort of put into chaos's place and order was happening, that there were these three witchy figures just like standing over this cauldron of like the cosmos. You were one of them. (laughs) (laughs) I can see it. Oh my God. With Um, my third eye. Yeah, right. I'm totally putting that in my ordination papers, JK. I'm not. Uh, Don't come for me. Don't come for me, (laughs) Board of Ordain Ministry. I'm not doing that. But that these three persons of the Trinity... Mm we're all sort of presiding at this cauldron of creation Mm -hmm. and that the second person of the Trinity is part of that Uh group. And as omniscient and knowing that one day that second person would incarnate Mm -hmm. in the person of Mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that's a, like, if you've never been told that clarifying point and think only that the second person of the Trinity is Jesus The most helpful thing that I can think of is that the second person of the Trinity is part of this like amoeba blob. And then part of this little amoeba blob breaks off and becomes something else that's incarnated and and living. (laughs) But that it's all still sort of working and witchy at the cauldron. Nice. Yeah. So witchy amoeba blob. Witchy amoeba blobs. (laughs) That's a dope ass band name. Yeah. Uh, thank you. We've been the witchy amoeba blobs. <laughs> you can follow us on Instagram at <laughs> witchy amoeba blobs. So yeah, it's just I John is making all kinds of theological claims mm. and doing so, in my opinion, just very poorly. <laughs> <laughs> just like you're you're talking about vines, you're talking about branches, you're talking about paths, you're talking about light. Mm-hmm. This is the one where mm-hmm. Jesus is the light, the sun is the light. And here talking about being bread of bread, bread right. and coming down from heaven. I do like, though, this connection between 
Bread from Heaven and Manna, which we did a podcast recently where we talked a little bit about, oh, it was actually with Melinda Strauss, the Orthodox Jewish TikTok creator. And we talked a lot about the 40 years in the desert and what manna Mm -hmm. actually meant Mm -hmm. and the gift that manna was, Mm -hmm. even though it was for a moment, Mm -hmm. was still something that was, it was sustenance. Uh It was life mm-hmm. in the midst of desert and darkness. It was it was all of these things. So I get it. It's not that I don't get the connection that John is making here. I think it's really, really about Jesus being sustenance and us through spirit, because John is a very spirit-filled gospel, being able to engage with sort of the cosmic identity mm-hmm. of who the Christ mm-hmm. is. Like Christ consciousness that yes. has always existed yes. and will always exist. Right. Right. But yeah, the whole like nobody comes to the Father except through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, it makes me feel icky too because icky. yeah, I also just think, yeah, I don't it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel nice. And also like I don't believe in hell. So Right. <laughs> Me either. Hey, just to be clear, if you're the board of ordained ministry and you're listening to this podcast, I totally believe in hell. Like t- eternal <laughs> punishment. Yes, Fire. I'm on board. Hashtag eternal punishment. Yes, burn them up. Burn them all up. Oh god. Right. Yeah, I don't believe in that. Shit. Anyway. Yeah. Hmm. What do you think this text can say to parents? <laughs> hmm, boy. I mean, Josie and I have some pretty high-level theological discussions. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I think that, I think that I would, I would use this probably, like if she and I, for whatever reason, were engaging this text together or, or, you know, just informing my parenting, I think I would just encourage her to see the deeper, the deep in herself, right? Like that, that this, these very surfacey things that we think of going back to the last part of the text where it's talking about like, you know, people ate of the, you know, manna in the wilderness and they died. Right. Like, <laughs> like I think that, and I do have these conversations with her where I just, I try to remind her that the, the things that we as a society seem to value are not things that are life giving. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, body image nonsense and you know we talk all the time about what actually provides happiness which is not what the world says provides happiness right Mm -hmm. money and status and all of this like that's not actually what provides happiness so i think it's really good to like talk about that stuff very early on because society is constantly slamming us with the opposite message right right all the time yeah i mean i think that's it I, again, I think it's so well said that I don't even feel like I need to add anything to that. Um, I think it's just continuing to validate our place in this whole mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. as um, as worthy, recognizing the Christ that lives within us, mm-hmm. knowing that Christ is, that the Christ energy is something that can sustain us. Yeah, the more we internalize that, like, goodness, that's what it means to follow Jesus. Like, don't give me the whole, like, pray more and open your Bible more. Like, again, if you're the Board of Ordained Ministry and listening to this podcast, like, get a life, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, <laughs> I definitely think you should pray and read the Bible. But, yeah, I mean, internalizing, like, the work of spirit in the world and in us, like, that's the whole point. It's the whole point. So, yeah. It was really amazing to do this with you. It was so fun. (laughs) We're going to have to do this again. Yes. Thanks for listening to the Auto Parent Podcast. We're going to leave you with a parent mantra, something you can say to yourself or to your partner just to know that you're not alone. Your mantra for this week is, I am not what the world tells me I am. I am not what the world tells me I am. Because friends, if you don't believe that, it's gonna be really hard to convince your kids. And remember this, you don't have to be an auto parent to be a good one. I've
been your host, Pastor KC. You can follow me on Twitter at RevKCVC. Join us next week, same time, same place. You can find out more information about Foundry United Methodist Church by visiting our website, www.foundryumc.org. If you're specifically looking for information about our Family Ministries Department or our offerings for parents, you can find those at www.foundryumc.org slash family ministries.